in comes this whirlwind, Don Coriel. And I remember him saying, you guys are one and three. You haven't won in a long time. People think I'm crazy to take this job. He says, well, guys, I tell you what, we all got to be a little bit crazy to play this game. And with that, we all started laughing, and we never stopped laughing until it was over. We love the city and the area of San Diego, the people here. We've lived here for so many years. It's, uh, it's coming back home. It's, it's our home. Don Coriel was already a local fan favorite. At San Diego State, he won more than 80% of his games with an innovative passing offense that shattered numerous collegiate records. This success earned him a head coaching job with the St. Louis Cardinals who ended a 25-year playoff drought following his arrival. After leaving St. Louis in 1977, Coriel seemed the perfect choice to rescue the struggling Chargers. Coach Coriel loves football. He loves his players. Didn't want to get involved in contract negotiations, didn't want to be involved with ownership issues. He wanted to get on the field. He wanted to coach. Never in my life have I seen a guy that was so intense about what he loved, which was the game. I mean, he'd look right through you. He'd walk down a hall. Coach, how you doing? Just walk right by you. Is he pissed at me? Did I say something wrong? And he had, there was no malice. He would just focus on little things. He would get lost in his own little world. If we needed popsicles for practice, that was the biggest thing that day. Forget practice plans. Oh, hell, we need popsicles. We need to get our guys happy for a little break during training camp. The most important thing to me about Don Coriel is that he actually cared about us as players. Don was always a guy that made you feel important. Your contributions to the offense or to the meetings or to the team or to the locker room was part of the deal. And was all we were all in this together. That's just him as a human being. I don't think there's ever been a coach who was more courageous about creating offense. Basically, it had to do with the passing game, obviously, but also with formations and use of personnel, seeing a player that could do more than one thing. Maybe this tight end could line up outside wide and create a mismatch, you know, like Kellen Winslow. He wanted to spread the field. He wanted to throw the football different formations, different ways to get things happen, looking for that mismatch, always trying to be innovative. It was the ideal marriage of tactics and talent. Besides Winslow, the Chargers were blessed with future Hall of Fame receiver Charlie Joyner, number 18, whose precision routes complemented the athletic ability of number 83, John Jefferson. The beauty of Gary Coriel is it's good against any defense. You want to pressure, it's fine. If you want to stack to stop the run, fine. You, you want to be stupid and try to play man coverage outside, fine. It was all timing and reads by the receivers, reads by the quarterback. Very difficult to defend. And nobody had seen that. In 1978, Air Coriel propelled the Chargers to their first winning season in nearly 10 years.